This video has been developed as an educational resource to illustrate best practices on how to evaluate images for alteration and aberrations to benefit the wider research community and in particular, academic journal editors. This video has been created by an independent consultant under the auspices of STM and is an output from the STM working group on image alteration and duplication detection. This video is not an endorsement by any publisher or STM of the sufficiency and effectiveness of the illustrated steps for all cases of image aberration. Hello and welcome to part three of this tutorial on image integrity. In this video, we will focus specifically on microscopy images and we're going to look at some typical issues that you might regularly come across during your image screening routine. First up, a note on image quality and resolution. It generally appears easier to screen images when they have high spatial resolution and look nice and crisp. However, in microscopy, the scientific question will determine the imaging technique, and some applications rely on low-resolution images. Generally, sensors with larger pixel sizes are more sensitive to light. This is because a larger pixel can capture more photons, which are the fundamental units of light. Remember that images can appear blurry or less resolved, although they are quantitatively correct. If in doubt, it makes sense to clarify by checking the legend or to discuss with an editor or the authors. You might encounter micrographs with very little contrast or images that are either very pale or too dark to make out any details. Try to adjust these images to assist the screening process. Tease out as many details as possible by using the Levels tool, which adjusts color balance, tone and exposure. It can be useful for your analysis to darken pale images or to brighten overly dark panels, so you might see things more clearly and spot potential data alterations or duplications. You should pay attention to the processing of images that are directly compared to each other. To allow images to be accurately compared, they should be acquired with identical settings and any post-acquisition processing should also be identical. This helps the reader to understand how each image relates to the others in the group. Changing brightness and contrast levels of the figure as a whole might reveal these differences. Among these panels here, the two images in the middle row have visibly different color balance and black levels in the background. If you encounter clearly different processing across a set of micrographs, you should find out why this was done. There are several common problems we might encounter in microscopy images. Among the most frequent are duplications. We differentiate between various types of duplications. You might encounter a figure panel that is a one-to-one -one duplicate and located nearby within the same figure. This may well be an accidental copy-paste error. Often, only parts of the panels overlap, like in this case. This is a duplication with repositioning, where two different sections of the same image are shown. When you're checking a homogeneous group of images for duplicates, it's a good technique to focus on the panel edges and corners and look for overlaps. To simplify comparing them, you can select individual panels and move them around. Remember that you might also need to flip or rotate images to match them.
Remember that one of the images may have been altered, making the duplication more difficult to detect. The match may have been recolored, for example, so you might find it useful to temporarily disregard color and to assess the whole figure in black and white. Or the matching image may have been resized or stretched, inverted or rotated. So if you suspect that there might be a duplicate somewhere, try rotating or flipping individual panels while checking. You can use the marquee tool and then the transform function to perform these actions. You might even want to adjust the color of individual panels to facilitate your analysis. Sometimes we find duplications where whole segments of an image have been replaced. The three scratch essays in this example appear different at first glance, but upon closer inspection some similarities may be detected. In fact, the entire lower region of the left panel reappears in the panel on the right, whilst the upper areas clearly differ. The duplication was created by using the clone tool, copying information from one panel and replacing an area in the other. The image on the right was also darkened slightly to further prevent detection. It is difficult for the untrained eye to spot this type of duplicate, but try focusing on small distinct elements or recognizable formation of shapes and look for a potential match. To verify whether two images are indeed duplicates of each other, you can perform overlay techniques such as this color overlay. The techniques are described in detail in the previous part of the series. Next up, we will look at merged fluorescence pictures that contain multiple images in different color channels. It is worth inspecting the individual channels here, as they might contain irregularities such as duplicates or visible data alteration. To examine and compare the channels in isolation, open the figure in Photoshop, where you can turn individual channels on and off by clicking on the eye symbol here. In our example, the green and red channels differ, whilst the blue channels are identical across the two images. Duplications of this type should always be queried. There's a variety of available digital techniques to add or remove selected elements from an image, and it is useful to know how they work in order to be able to spot the telltale signs. Elements can be added by straightforward cutting and dropping in a section from elsewhere. This can often be detected simply by adjusting brightness and contrast of an image. The edges of the dropped-in section are likely to stand out unless they have been obscured by an expert user. Elements may have also been added by use of the clone tool, which produces softer edges and is often more difficult to detect unless the cloned area comes from elsewhere within the same image, so that we can spot a duplication. Cloning entails replacing the information in one region of a picture with information from another. In our example, a small cluster of signals repeats across the image several times. This would not occur naturally and is a clear indicator of data alteration. When small areas repeat throughout an image, this could also indicate that specific areas in the image were replaced in order to hide or in effect remove elements. Most graphic software now offer a tool for this. Photoshop's content-aware fill was designed to remove unwanted objects or distracting elements from an image by replacing a marked up area with information from the surrounding area. This tool was first available with CS5, released in 2010, and its functionality has improved as a result of subsequent updates. To remove the dark area on the right from our example image, the area is first marked up with the marquee tool before the basic content-aware fill technique is applied.
the dark area has now completely disappeared. Now, if we look closely, we can detect some duplicated elements, where the program has extracted and copied over information from the surrounding area. If we consider the full image, the duplicates aren't that noticeable, but if you know what you're looking for and zoom in more closely, you might find spotting these areas quite easy. Erasing areas is also possible using various options in image editing software, such as the brush tool or the eraser tool in Photoshop, which essentially erases pixels as it is dragged across the image. Adjusting brightness and contrast levels will often reveal the traces of the eraser tool. It's sometimes used to clean up or remove unwanted bright signals, creating a cleaner, tidier background to fluorescent elements. Selective enhancement and deleting data does not comply with community standards. Look out for sharp-edged monochrome areas that might have a hand-drawn appearance. Further issues that we encounter on a regular basis and that should be flagged up are non-matching insets or side panels. When close-ups are shown next to an image, the magnified section depicted in the inset should ideally be marked clearly in the corresponding panel like in this example. However, we sometimes find that the panel showing the magnified image does not match the section indicated. Sometimes the selection is just marked incorrectly, and in some cases the images may not correspond at all. Also pay attention to scale bars. They are sometimes incorrect, illegible or even missing altogether. You should watch out for that. If only one panel in a group of images has a scale bar, then it should apply to the whole group. Ensure that this is plausible and that the individual images are indeed all shown at the same magnification. In addition to inspecting the panels within each individual figure, remember to also screen across the relevant figures. You can tile the individual files in Photoshop, opening them side by side. This allows you to compare images of the same type and check for duplicates or inconsistencies. Remember that instead of straining your eyes to study small details, you should always zoom in to arrive at a comfortable view. Summing up, try the following routine. Use the Levels tool to adjust very dark or pale images to facilitate inspection. Establish whether low resolution and artifacts are justified. When we check for duplications, we differentiate between one-to-one -one straight duplications of whole images, duplications with repositioning, and remember to concentrate on panel edges and corners, and duplicates with alterations. These might include resizing, inverting, rotating, stretching, color changes and adding or removing of elements. You can tile images to compare across multiple figures, inspect individual color channels in merged images and use overlay techniques to verify duplications. Look for traces of data alteration. These might include cloning, data deletion and dropped-in elements. Also watch out for inconsistent processing, non-matching insets and magnified panels, and incorrect or missing scale bars.